shit. Hey, what's up, bookworms? A uh, little something different today. I just kind of want to talk about some of my poor decision making. Um, you guys know that I am hosting a really heavy read along right now. I don't want to say heavy, I mean like heavy as in like the number of people that are participating in the read along of the Great Coats right now. And we're doing Malazan next year. And I'm doing this whole thing in October of all my horror stuff. So my plate is really full, right? Uh, so here's the problem. I have this thing where people <laughs> will make recommendations and even if I have the tightest schedule, the most locked in TBR, it don't matter. I will break it for the right thing. And something I have been putting off for a while is the Lycanius Trilogy by James Islington. Uh, yes, I am the type of guy who says, I'm going to try to fit that in. I mean, look, Look at these big bastards. That's just two of them. The third one doesn't come out in the trade until December. At least not in the States. So, um, yeah, if I keep going with this before the end of the year, I'll have to pick that last one up on, on, on Kindle for now. Uh, oh, no. Uh, but here's the thing. I knew that if I kept moving this series back, because I made a video a few months ago about why I decided to move Lycanius back, and it was so I could finish other series that I was in the middle of, because I felt like I'd never finished those series. Well, here's the thing for me, and this, this might be an unpopular opinion of some sort. Uh, the Witcher series kind of fell off a cliff for me, to where I'm like, I'm not ready to read one of those right after the other right now, or else I'm going to get so burned out, I'm eventually going to end up hate reading it. Uh, I like the series overall, I just wasn't really feeling the particular book that I was on. So I was like, I'm going to take a quick break because I feel like I'm going to do this series a disservice if I don't. Uh, and I really have almost no wanting desire to finish The Demon Cycle by Peter V. Brett. I love the first book. Second book was pretty good. Third book, uh, it's about the equivalent of what Blood Mirror was to Lightbringer, where it was almost like a, uh, a franchise killer for me. And the fact that all the feedback I've heard tells me, well, if you didn't like the direction it headed there, you might not like where it's headed. Uh, so, obviously, I, I, I was able to go back on that. But then I was like, okay, I've got I've got this great coach read along. I've got all this horror stuff. I got all these things I'm trying to get out of the way before uh, before Rhythm of War comes out in November. We got the cover for that, by the way. And I, I, how much power does Brandon Sanderson have that he can release the cover of a new book and the fantasy community just loses their mind, right? Anyhow. Uh, so I had the opening and the schedule for something small, right? So I pick up these crazy, crazy long books. But like I said, I knew with Malazan coming next year and Realm of the Elderlings, Robin Hobb, I knew that if I kept pushing these down the line and I got into 2021, I wasn't going to read them at all because I wasn't going to pick up any books this heavy, no matter how easy to read or anything like that they are. I wasn't going to pick up any books that heavy right now. So I said, my God, just go for it. Why not, right? <laughs> um, I'm almost done with Mistborn Era 2. Uh, my horror stuff, I, I feel like a lot of that stuff I was going to reread. Uh, I have read, you know, Dracula and Frankenstein and Lovecraft and all that stuff before. And I said, you know what? I'll be okay, I think, if I don't reread those. I'll be able to do reviews for those without rereading them. And it's not something I can't revisit down the line. I'm not bumping anything off of the Fright Fest schedule as far as new reads. Like, I'm still reading Clyde Barker. I'm still going to finish The Hunger by Omakatsu. Uh, I'm still going to, uh, you know, a lot of the original stuff that I had planned on reading again for the first time, or reading for the first time, I'm going to do. It's just the stuff that I was planning to reread if I remember it pretty well. Like, I remember Vampire Chronicles fine, things like that. I'm not going to reread that stuff. Uh, there's so much stuff that I want to read that I can bump some stuff that I plan on rereading. That's why I slowed my roll on my Stephen King reread. Because, you know, I want to read so much stuff. And, you know, there's only one life you get here. So, uh, you know, I want to try to read some new stuff. So anyway, long story short, yes, I decided to start Lycanius. Uh, so many mixed things I've heard about this series. Uh, Elephant in the Room. It gets compared to Wheel of Time a lot. Look, I am about 200 pages into the first book. I'm seeing 200 pages, and look how small that is. <laughs> oh, what beast of books these are. Uh, 
I see no Wheel of Time comparison, like, at all. Uh, like I said, unless something really, really... I mean, unless Wheel of Time has, like, a monopoly on magic, I'm not seeing it. But I felt like everyone I trust with their fantasy opinions have really liked this series, and the people that have been negative on it, I don't know if this is fact, but I seem to draw the correlation that they absolutely love the Wheel of Time. So I, I don't know if it's because, see, even on the cover here, love the Wheel of Time, this is going to be your new favorite series. And uh, like I said, my, my, my guy Patrick on Goodreads actually said, imagine Wheel of Time without the fluff. And I think that that rubbed a lot of Wheel of Time fans the wrong way. So they just kind of went into this, you know, kind of with the arms crossed. Like they were just like, mm, I don't know about this. And I felt like they were already poised to hate it. I might be wrong on that. That's just how I, the assumption that I have made going into it. But as I've gotten about 200 pages in here, uh, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. Um, it very Sanderson light. Yes, his writing isn't as good as Brandon Sanderson. Look, I didn't expect a first-time author to write as good as arguably the best in the game right now. Okay, so uh, I, I got that feedback a lot. Oh, it's nothing as good as Brandon Sanderson. Well, no shit. I didn't expect a first-time author to be as good as the Lord Ruler in his first outing. But as a debut novel, I think this is very impressive start. Uh, the lore building is absolutely amazing. The pace is breakneck. And I love that he's building his world at the same time. He's not doing so many info dumps that you're kind of checking out immediately. And it's really, really quick dialogue. I, I, there's a lot of dialogue, which is just unusual for most modern fantasy, which will be, you know, one line of dialogue and then three paragraphs of description of what's around them. Uh, I feel like he's got a good balance here. So I don't know if that, that, that holds up or whatever. I've already had my uh, expectations subverted in a good way more than once, uh, but uh, I just wanted to kind of say why I decided to start the series. Uh, if any of you guys ha have read it, uh, please let me know how you feel about it. Um, again, I'm not far. I think I'm 25%. If I think that's what about 25% into this first book here. So I'm obviously not ready to make any judgment. I just I think it started better than I expected. I expected to start really slow because I've had some people tell me it starts kind of sloggy. So if uh, the, the first uh, few hundred pages are considered the sloggy parts, I can't wait to see what happens when it really gets good because I'm enjoying it quite a bit right now. So um, yeah, if you have any interest or whatever and you got any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to, uh, to, to answer them if uh, I'm not encouraging anyone to read along with me or anything like that. If you want to, I mean, that's always welcome. But I mean, I, I know that this is asking for a big commitment. Uh, but uh, yeah, basically Malazan. Malazan is something that I want to focus on. You know, I, I always stagger my books. Like I'm reading three books right now. I'm reading Shadow of What Was Lost. I'm reading The Hunger by Amakatsu. And I'm reading The Bands of Mourning by Brandon Sanderson. So I stagger my reading. It's, it's fine. I usually will try to do one horror or sci-fi mixed with a fantasy book. But with Malazan, I'm not doing that. I'm not sharing time with Malazan. I want to focus on that, give it my undivided attention. I plan on reading those by themselves straight through when I read one of those. Sticking to the schedule, of course. I'm not saying I'm reading 10 in a row. Uh, sticking to the reading schedule that we have for it. So I want to get my slate pretty much cleared off here so I can focus on Malazan and Realm of the Elderlings, mostly in 2021. I'm, of course, I'm going to litter in new series now and then, but I think that they're going to try to be some lighter series. I know I'm not going to sprinkle in big, massive books like this uh, along with those series, because like I said, I want those to take the priority. So guys, um, basically, uh, what I can tell you is, Patrick, that's my dude, but he is detrimental to my TBR's health, because I blame this on him. <laughs> Love you, brother. Uh, have a great, great day, guys. Like I said, just a quick one to let you know what was going on with this. I did put up the uh, the thing on the community tab and got lots of feedback on people uh, about what they feel about this book. But um, Shadow of What Was Lost, have you read it? What do you think? Let me know. Yes, I know Daniel Green did not like it. Yes, I know Murphy Green was mixed on it. Or Murphy Green. Murphy Napier was mixed on it. Yes, I know Elliot Brooks thought it was just okay. I know these things. Let me know what you thought about it if you have read it. And I will talk to you guys in the comments.